From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Falcon Air, based at Vanderbrom Airport in Pretoria, has developed and is producing the Falcon 402 single-engine passenger and utility aircraft. Keith Campbell reports. The Falcon 402 is a neat-seat aircraft powered by a single turboprop engine and fitted with a glass or digital cockpit. Falcon Air project engineer David Toma tells us about the program. The Falcon 402 project is a development that's in progress. You know, the first aeroplane happened to be flying in 2009. It's an eight-seat single-engine turboprop that's currently operating in the non-type certified uh, theme of things with regards to the Civil Aviation Authority. And the aim of the project at the moment is to definitely work towards type certification. Once again, according to the US FAR 23 standards, and we are practically, I'd like to say, on our way sort of halfway through with regards to where we'd like to end up with the flight testing. We currently have four Falcons that are currently flying with number five entering our test flight program shortly. We hope to have uh, started the test flying in the end of the December 2016. With the remainder of it will be happening in January 2017 and maybe pushing on to February. Toma explains the difference between non-type certified and type certified aircraft. From a type certified aircraft perspective, they've seen a, a bunch of regulations where your aircraft must perform according to those regulations, where it also manages from just, just the way you fly the airplane, the way it's designed, but also it's the way it's built, flown, where it's flown and repaired and they're after serviced. Non-type certified aircraft is based on that, where you must comply with one of the known certification standards. However, it gives you a little bit more leniency and it helps out the most from an experimental or development perspective. The example I can give you, where in the sort of aircraft as we're flying at the moment of the Falcon 402, if we ever wanted to put a new radio just to try it out, it's a matter of having a new equipment list being drawn out, testing the new radio, making it functional, and thereafter with the CAA going through the process. Where as compared to a certified aircraft, there's a whole mod approval process that would need to go through just for a small change such as a radio stack. So it, it allows us, it's more for development purposes, you know. So obviously there are limitations on non-type certified aircraft where they are not allowed to operate commercially, which is obvious because they haven't gone through the same strenuous testing that a certified aircraft is going through. But I'd like to stress that especially the approach that we have taken and if you stick to what the law requires you, it is as safe as I would call any type certified aircraft if you comply with the same standards. With non-type certified aircraft, we currently operate as an amateur built. If you'd like to remain in non-type certified, there is production built aircraft and there are plenty of other production built non-type certified aircraft flying around. However, in order to operate commercially, whether it be from a flying charter perspective or just to have more of them known all over the world, type certification would be the way to go. Future plans at the moment is uh, directly the next step would be you'd like to go towards uh, type approval as a non-type certified aircraft, but approved as per the FAR 23 certification standard. With that, obviously, we will there be another market study and hopefully go directly towards FAR 23 type certification. This will basically allow us to better market the aircraft worldwide as compared to just in South Africa. Black women-owned steel manufacturing company, RSC Avelo, was officially launched in Ruderport last month and aims to be a key player in the markets. It is a really difficult um, economic climate at the moment. Um, you know, we, we are in a depressed market, especially from a steel supply perspective because um, infrastructure development, you know, has not been as good as, as the former years. Um, we really plan to sustain the market by, by offering a better service to our cli clients. Um, we currently have a small client base, so they're easy to really look after. Um, and then we plan to go out there and pursue and, and compete with the big guys. I think the differentiator in the market um, is not so much price, but, but service. Kester added that the company currently had a sizable client base but was going to pursue bigger projects in 2017. Avello has been supplying steel to renewable energy and wind projects throughout the country and has supplied thousands of tons of steel to bridges and construction projects. Kester further noted that when it comes to jobs on Avello's sites, the company uses subcontractors, giving small businesses the opportunity to employ people. The business was started in September 2015. We just over a year old. We have an administration team of about 10 
and 15 people working in, um, in operations and that's besides the guys on site. She stated that Avello has 25 full-time employees. Steel and Engineering Industries Federation of Southern Africa CEO Kaiser Nyatsumba noted that the metals and engineering sector was in the midst of a crisis. The metals and engineering sector in South Africa is going through a crisis. It isn't the only one. We know our economy has been seriously underperforming. Now you need to have a, a number of infrastructure development projects going on. So we desperately want uh, the various strategic implement, uh, strategic projects identified in the National Development Plan to be, to, be, to be implemented because that would stimulate the economy, including the metals and engineering sector. Uh, the metals and engineering sector is a supplier primarily to mining, auto manufacturing and to construction. Construction has not been doing well as a sector, nor has mining. Mining, in fact, over, for, for years now uh, has not been doing well. So though those two uh, have had a negative impact on the performance of the metals and engineering sector. So it's things that have been bad. Uh, now within the metals and engineering sector, we have the primary steel producers, so the, 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 the steel subsection, which uh, has uh, seriously struggled. Uh, the whole sector, metals and engineering sector, has struggled as a consequence in the main of lack of demand domestically, of uh, significant in, 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 imports uh, that land here at a, at a much cheaper price than things we can produce here mostly because of a whole host of factors. That's Krima Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.